आई एम डॉक्टर अरुण कुमार सिंह असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ऑफ इंग्लिश संत सिरोमणि गुरु रविदास गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज सरगांव डिस्ट्रिक्ट मुंगेली छत्तीसगढ़ आई एम गोइंग टू टीच द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ एम ए इंग्लिश सेकेंड सेमेस्टर आई विल डिस्कस रॉबर्ट लिंड एज एन एसिस्ट आई विल डिस्कस थीम कंटेंट एंड ह्यूमर ऑफ द एस ए फॉर गेटिंग रिटर्न बाय रॉबर्ट लिंड आई विल डिस्कस द ब्यूटी एंड एस्थेटिक्स ऑफ द एस ए बैक टू द डेस्क रिटर्न बाय रॉबर्ट लिंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू टेल यू अबाउट रॉबर्ट लिंड इन दिस पेरिशेबल वर्ल्ड मिलियंस ऑफ पीपल टेक बर्थ ग्रो यंग एंड ओल्ड एंड ब्रीद देयर लास्ट अन नोन एंड अन ऑनर्ड बट सम ग्रेट सोल्स ऑल्सो टेक बर्थ एंड दे क्रिएट इमोर्टल वर्क्स ऑफ लिटरेचर आयरलैंड produced great literary figures james joyce was an extraordinary novelist and he gave the technique of a stream of consciousness his book an artist a portrait of an artist as a young man gives a graphic description of irish life james singh was an illustrious dramatist his drama riders to the sea is a dark comedy and he gives the message that man is just a puppet in the hands of god but at the same time the protagonist of his drama is killed no doubt but like the old man of hemingway he is not defeated his his spirit his boldness his firm determination he remains unconquered w b h he is one of the greatest poets of modern age and robert lind he is one of the greatest essayist of english literature he was born in 1879 in belfast ireland he was born and brought up in belfast he was educated in belfast and he started his literary career depicting the delightful aspects of irish life he wrote some articles for a journal in belfast in 1901 robert lind came to manchester and from manchester he came to london he started writing several articles for the daily news a reputed journal of england charles dickens was the editor of this newspaper a g gardiner a great essayist of the 20th century he was the editor of this newspaper and robert lind also became the literary editor of his newspaper the daily news the name was changed 
and the daily news became the new chronicle he wrote several articles for the new chronicle after that he wrote so many essays for the new statesman so robert lind was an illustrious essayist he was a unique journalist his literary career may be divided into two parts his political essays and his literary essays first i would like to tell you something about his political essays ireland was a slave of britain it had no independence no freedom in this country in ireland head was not held high and mind was not without fear so a revolution was going on against the britishers people of the people of ireland were extremely angry with the britishers and they starting they started opposing the britishers vehemently violently they believed in violence murder and bloodshed india was also struggling for its freedom against the britishers but the weapon of mahatma gandhi was non violence he did not believe in murder and bloodshed he politely protested against the britishers and he compelled the britishers to leave india and robert lind he was a great supporter of the revolution of ireland he was a very good speaker he supported the cause of the irish people he delivered long lectures he actively participated in the revolution and he wrote several political essays in one of his essays he wrote that then came august 1914 england was ready england was starting a war to make a small nations in the other continent of the world free he was giving freedom to small nations in different parts of the world but he was not going to give the freedom to ireland lind says that simple stroke of pain will give an autonomy will give freedom liberty to ireland but britain did not do it so he was against the britishers he wrote several essays against the britishers he vehemently opposed the hypocrisy the dual policy of the britishers he did not like the views the attitudes of the britishers so in his political essays his tone is violent in his political essays his tone is forceful aggressive in these essays he speaks like he speaks like a missionary he enjoys the zeal of a missionary and he enjoys the foresight of a visionary now let us come to his literary essays his literary essays 
are very beautiful, very elegant and very humorous. He enjoyed, he enjoyed a special sense. His attitude towards life was comic and positive. He wrote several literary essays, journalistic essays for different journals. He, he, he enjoyed in the, he believed in the love of the common people, in the delightful aspects of day to day life. He wanted to uplift the downtrodden sections of the society and, and he believed in pleasures and joy of life. His essays are full of epigrams, ironies and bathos. He creates humor. Robert Lind produces humor in his essays. In his essays, he teaches, he preaches, no doubt, but generates smiles on our lips. I would like to tell you about a very interesting essay of Robert Lind. Un-English. Un-English is a very humorous essay. It gives us immense pleasure. It gives us immense amusement. Two Dutch seamen arrive at the seashore of Belfast. The captain of the ship also arrives. The two Dutch seamen go to a bar for drinking at night. They drink, they drink a lot and after drinking they start abusing the local people. They start biting the local people. In the morning, the two Dutch seamen are brought before the magistrate. The captain of the ship also comes before the magistrate and the captain puts the whole case. After hearing everything, the magistrate, who is an Englishman, he says that these people have created a lot of problem. They started abusing the people. They started biting the people. So, this behavior, this attitude is completely un-English. The captain immediately retorts, Your Honor, it is un-Dutch also. And Lind says that, it is one of the best retorts in history. If anything is unpleasant, if anything is awkward, if anything is uncivilized for the British people, it is same for the Dutch people. It is same for the Americans. It is same for the Indians. In one of his essays on holidays, Robert Lind inspires the people to go on holidays, to go in the dark woods which are lovely, dark and deep. He inspires them to get 
to get lost in the dream world and he says and his statement is very emphatic if you do not slay your habits your habits will slay you this is a very beautiful example of an epigram so if you don't change yourself if you don't go outside and enjoy the sweets of life your life will become monotonous it will become insipid in the next essay on good resolutions he asks people to take resolutions he asks them to make plans he asks them to have grand dreams but but resolutions plans or dreams are not enough translate them into reality execute them into actuality thoughts precede actions no doubt but actions speak louder than words so be a thinker and be a doer also be a karma yogi also in one of his essays the money box robert lind asks us to save money saving money is a good habit but he says eat drink and be merry the stomach is sensitive human and warm and the pocket is inhuman unfeeling and cold to so save money but pay attention to your body the body is the temple of god if health is lost you lost an important thing of your life if health is lost pleasures of life are lost so in different essays he gives different suggestions he gives different views he takes the readers into his confidence and exposes his soul robert lind is compared with charles lamb the prince of the english essayists charles lamb enjoys a very charming personality humor and pathos go hand in hand in his essays if he creates he smiles on your lips he generates tears in your eyes he speaks about a large number of things about his school days about his friends and relatives about the bachelor's complaints about the day dreams and so many things of imagination he is a romantic essayist similarly Robert Lind is one of the most pleasing essayists. He tells everything in very pleasant ways. The language of his essays is full of profound erudition, erudition and sublime expression. He does not use pompous and bombastic words like milton and johnson he uses simple mellifluous 
and appropriate words. Words create a beautiful atmosphere in his essays. His essays are full of learned allusions. His essays are full of practical advice, practical pragmatic suggestions. His essays are full of fun, laughter and humor. Proper words come to him as naturally as lips come to a tree. So when we read his literary essays, we come to the conclusion that his literary essays are elegant, pleasant and soothing. They fire our fancy, they ignite our imagination, they give pleasure, they preach and amuse, they preach some moral sermons, at the same time they entertain us.